Hello everyone. Today in this lecture, I am going to discuss about the organ that forms the part of digestive system. Yes, here you can see I am talking about the pharynx. So, is it forming the part of digestive system only? No. It is also forming the part of respiratory system as well. So, that we will see later. Before you watch this video, I will suggest you that I had already been made various videos of digestive system. So, you can go through with this all. So, you may have proper connectivity with this all other parts. So, uh, let us see uh, what all we discuss here in this lecture. I am going to deal about its various anatomical regions, its boundaries and the wall of pharynx. So here you can see the pharynx have three anatomical regions depending on the part are associated with it. Like here you can see this is the nasopharynx because here is the nasal cavity that opens into posteriorly in the pharyngeal part and that is why it is called nasopharynx. So what is pharynx? Pharynx is a muscular funnel shaped tube. So uh, as it is funnel shaped so it is more wide at top and inferiorly it is narrow. So thereby in nasopharyngeal part it is more wide. Nextly it forms a narrow tube and in lower most region it is narrowest. Okay. So here we can see there are the three part of pharynx, nasopharynx, oropharynx and laryngopharynx. So nasopharynx because nasal cavity uh, which forms the part of respiratory system. So here the nasal cavity, the internal nares open into this part in the nasopharyngeal part. So that is why it is called nasopharynx. Okay. In this nasopharyngeal part, uh, there are two important structures which lies within it. One is adenoid that is pharyngeal tonsil. So uh, whatever the tonsils are, uh, whether they are pharyngeal tonsil or the tonsil which belongs to the oropharyngeal part, this all provide us the immunological protection against the various foreign invaders that can invade through air route or via the food. Okay. So first let us see in the pharyngeal, nasopharyngeal part, uh, this is the adenoid and it is also called as the pharyngeal tonsil. Okay. This is situated in the posterior wall of nasopharynx. Okay. And there are two tubes that open into this nasopharynx are called auditory tube or you can say eustachian tube. So this is the tube that usually remain closed and this connect the middle ear to this pharyngeal part. So uh, what it does, it equalizes the pressure between the atmosphere and the middle ear because uh, whenever we heard something our tympanic membrane vibrates and that can be pulled in and that can be pushed out. So to maintaining the balance of this tympanic membrane, we have proper uh, atmospheric pressure in the middle layer. So to balance this, these two helps. So I think that you might have noticed that whenever you swallow or you yawn or you sneeze, at that time you felt some pressure in your ear because at that time only the tubes remain open and the air moves in. Okay. So that can create some pressure in your middle ear. Okay. So this tube help in maintaining the balance between the atmosphere and middle ear pressure. So almost it remains closed but in certain circumstances it uh, opens and whenever it opens we feel some pressure in our ear. Okay. So here we have seen the two structure which present in nasopharynx is one is adenoid and second is the auditory tube or eustachian tube. Okay, so here in red you can see this is the eustachian tube that connects this pharyngeal part to the middle ear. Okay, so it is the widest part in the whole three anatomical region. This one is the widest region. Okay, and this is uh, only the passageway for the air because it connects the nasal cavity. So only the air uh, which is inhale or exhale is usually passes through this root. Okay. Food is not passing through this root. Mind it. Next after the nasopharynx the part which extends from this uvula 
this hanging structure the part which extends from this region up to the hyoid bone here this is the hyoid bone up to the hyoid bone or you can say uh, the epiglottis this green one is the epiglottis part so the part extends from this uvula up to the hyoid bone or you can say the upper border of epiglottis is called oropharynx why it is calling oropharynx because the oral cavity open through this fossus or the opening into this pharyngeal part so the oral cavity uh, is usually open in this oropharyngeal part so that's why it is called fossus or you can say uh, the isthmus okay so in this oropharyngeal part or as well there are many tonsil like we already um, talked about this in tongue that uh, in base of the tongue there is the lingual tonsil yes and uh, there are the two arcs that extends from the palate that is palatoglossal arc and palatopharyngeal arc in between these two arc also there are the tonsil these are called palatine tonsil so whatever the tonsils are whether they belongs to oral part or whether they belongs to nasal part these all provide us immunological protection against various invaders which travel along the air or food route okay so this is the oropharynx now below to this oropharynx this is comparatively narrow in comparison to the nasopharyngeal part below to this oropharynx is the laryngopharynx because it lies behind this larynx part here it is the larynx so as it lies behind the larynx so it is called laryngopharynx as well as hypopharynx so this laryngopharynx extends from the hyoid bone or you can say the upper border of epiglottis here it is so it extends from this region up to the lower border of cricoid cartilage so here the green one is the cricoid cartilage and uh, back of this are the various cervical vertebras so you can also say that cervical sixth vertebra because it is also correspond with this lower border of epiglottis uh, not epiglottis it is cricoid cartilage so the lower border of cricoid cartilage and posteriorly the sixth cervical vertebra are the landmark where the laryngopharynx extends okay so here is the laryngopharynx also called as hypopharynx and this is the narrowest part in the pharynx so the most widest is the nasopharynx then the oropharynx and the narrowest one is the laryngopharynx so these are the three anatomical regions depending on the various structures associated with it nasopharynx belongs to the nasal cavity oropharynx belongs with the oral cavity and laryngopharynx is associated with the larynx part which is present anterior to this structure so let's see what all boundaries are there superiorly this pharynx is extends from the base of the skull so here uh, the part of sphenoid bone as well as occipital bone come here so superiorly there is the base of the skull and inferiorly this pharynx extends through the esophagus part that is the next part in gi tract after the pharynx so superiorly is the base of the skull inferior is the esophagus and anteriorly its wall is not complete because it opens into the various openings like uh, there is nasal cavity that opens into it the oral cavity that opens into it so anteriorly anteriorly the wall is not complete posteriorly there is a prevertebral fascia prevertebral because uh, on back of this there are the vertebral bodies uh, the cervical bodies okay uh, the in vertebras there are various uh, types like the vertebra which is present in neck is called cervical so here comes the cervical vertebra so prevertebral fascia means there is a band of connective tissue which lies before the vertebra okay so that's why it is called prevertebral fascia which is present on the posterior aspect of the pharynx okay so these are the boundaries i'm not going in detail so you can learn it very easily that on superior the base of the skull is there inferiorly it is continuous with the esophagus 
anteriorly the wall is not complete because of the various openings and posteriorly as the vertebra is there and as it is lies in uh, neck region so there is a cervical vertebra and before two vertebra is a pre vertebral face here band of connective tissue that lies anteriorly two vertebra but posterior to pharynx so these are the various boundaries now next come to the wall of pharynx so i told you that the pharynx is a muscular funnel shaped tube so this tubular part the tube uh, because uh, whatever the tube is there the middle part is the lumen which empty and the wall the wall is basically made up of a uh, few layers okay so we'll see here the wall so imagine here is the lumen the hollow space okay so the lining the innermost lining that lines this lumen is called mucosa this blue one so the innermost lining that lines the lumen is the mucosa next come the submucosa that is uh, this white part in between the red and blue inner to that is the pharyngeo basilar face here again it is the band of connective tissue okay this red one and inner to that is very important muscular coat muscle lining and uh, here the important thing is that in pharynx there is the two type of arrangement the inner one is the longitudinal muscles uh, which runs parallel uh, to the tube and the outer one is circular okay that surrounds the tube like this okay so let's see the outer one so outer is circular one so here i have not drawn here the longitudinal fibers but you can see here the circular fibers okay so the circular muscle fibers are also arranged in a different three part these are called depending on their position the upper one is called superior the middle one is the middle and the lower most is called inferior so there are basically three type of constrictors outer circular muscles constrictor because these help in constriction of the tube because uh, the food which we swallow what happened by this all constrictors only the food propels down okay so superior middle and inferior constrictors and the arrangement is also uh, something different like here uh, you can imagine if uh, if you are placing one cup on uh, another then what will be happen the lower most cup will surround the upper one yes in same manner the muscle fibers are also arranged the inferior pharyngeal constrictor this is called inferior pharyngeal constrictor surrounds the middle okay this surrounds the middle pharyngeal constrictor and middle surrounds the superior pharyngeal constrictor okay so this is almost like one on the another in same manner so these are the three constrictors pharyngeal constrictors which forms the uh, outer circular muscle layer okay the longitudinal muscles Uh, fibers are lying inner inner to these all constrictor so basically there are the three stylopharynges because its origination is from styloid process and they in, they innervate or insert in between or in the inner aspect of these constrictors the second one is palatopharynges that originate from the palatine bone and then insert in the inner aspect of these constrictors and the last one is the salpingo pharynges that originate from auditory tube salpingo means auditory tube that originate from auditory tube and insert in the inner aspect of these constrictors so all together these all muscle fibers originate from anteriorly from whatever the part they belongs to they are originating from anterior aspect then they goes laterally and then posteriorly these all constrictor meet at medial fibrous raphe okay so posteriorly these all are inserting in okay so here i have drawn in slightly in detail manner how these muscle fibers are arranged in 
so uh, the difference is that the inner the inferior not inner the inferior constructor uh, have another two division because here you can see the thyroid and cricoid cartilage of larynx so the inferior constructor is divided into two thyropharyngeal because it is originating from thyroid cartilage so that's why called thyropharyngeal and the crico pharyngeal because these are originating from cricoid cartilage okay so these are the two division of inferior constrictors and later on this crico pharyngeal is continuous with this esophageal part okay so these are the muscle cords and next in the wall of pharynx uh, which lies outermost is called bucco pharyngeal fascia this red one so this is how the wall is formed from inner to outer mucosa sub mucosa pharyngeo basilar pharyngeo basilar fascia then the muscle coat inner is longitudinal outer is circular three uh, constrictors and the outermost lining is the bucco pharyngeal fascia so thereby the wall of pharynx is formed so here in this lecture we have discussed the structure of pharynx and we have discussed that it is uh, the part of respiratory and digestive system as well and we have seen the three anatomical regions of pharynx the various boundaries of pharynx and the wall from which it is made up of thank you